Hey guys, my name is Troy and welcome back to Facility D20 where we're always making cool stuff. I think I should have a little heart to heart before I start this video and let you in on a little bit about myself. Anyone who knows me knows that I love Ghostbusters. Actually, anybody who knows anybody who knows anybody who knows me knows that I love Ghostbusters. Ever since I was a little kid, me and my sister would like make proton packs out of closed detergent boxes and little cardboard tubes. We tied all together with a bit of whiskers and we'd run around the house busting ghosts. Now around October, my kids got really excited about Ghostbusters to my delight and then with the new movie in November, everybody was pumped. So we decided to sit down, design and build our own proton packs for my boys and for my nieces and nephews, my sister's kids. We wanted to get them all ready by Christmas and send them off to them. And I'm really excited to show you this process and stick around because I got something really special at the end of this video that I want you guys to check out. So make sure you check out that before you leave. Come on in, let's get at it. Oh, it's you. <laughs> okay, but I didn't know you had your license. First thing we gotta do is measure your guys' backs. Make sure the packs are gonna fit. Who wants to get measured first? Me. Oldest first? Okay. Eight by 12. Now me. Now you? Okay. Now what? Seven inches by 10 inches. <laughs> yeah! Okay, so what we're gonna do is Daddy's gonna make the shape of the pack and then we're gonna draw some designs on it. Yay! And I'm gonna make it half your size and half your size right in the middle so it could fit to you guys. Sound good? We're gonna get some markers and do some designs? Yeah! Oh no! <laughs> Head bumps! <laughs> oh, crazy! I'm gonna tell you what we gotta do. Okay. But I wanna make them so I got my these. Time. Yeah, I got these little pieces here so that you can trace them and make shapes if you want to make thank shapes. You, thank you, thank you. Okay, so everybody start designing and when we're done, Daddy's going to take a little bit from everybody's design. I made a rectangle. You did. So right now we're just doing things for fun. And this is not going to be the final design. So you don't have to worry about making any mistakes. I'm 3D printed, right? We're going to 3D print some birds, yep. Yeah. I think this can be the ribbon cable, what? Why? The ribbon cable, we can add mm -hmm. all kinds of colorful wires in that part. Mm -hmm. What do you think? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah? And Lincoln, I'd like the booster to be done yours. Mm -hmm. Let's What's that part up here? Mm -hmm. What's that part? Mm -hmm. You don't know? We'll call it the catcher grid. I think yours is the best. No, it's not the best. But everybody's going to use a little bit. So you want to know what Daddy thinks so far? Daddy's going to take your rectangle and your ribbon cord. Why? And Daddy's going to take your ghost grape, your twin booster. My triplet booster. Your triplet boosters. And my logo. And take a little bit from each of our designs, put them all together, use some 3D software, and draft up a pack combining all our elements. Well that was a ton of fun, it was really cool to see all the unique things that boys came up with. The next thing I got to do is to take all three of these designs and combine them together and make our own unique proton pack. There are a few things that I want to keep from the original proton pack like the ion arm, the clippered valves, the cyclotron, but we're probably going to put our own spin on things. The next thing I got to do is fire up my laptop, get out Blender and start to design all these things because most of this thing is going to be 3D printed. I'm probably going to do the frame in some PVC and the backpack motherboard and some plywood, but the rest of the components are going to be printed on my FDM printer. So this design is probably going to take me a while, so I better get started. I like to use Blender for this stuff. It's free to use and a really powerful drafting tool. Overall, it took me like almost two weeks to draft this whole pack up from start to finish. I'm not great at Blender, but I can maneuver faces in geometry pretty well, so that's pretty much what I did for this pack. If you guys are interested in these SDLs, they are available on my Patreon. I'll link it at the end of the video. 
After a couple of weeks of design and hiding away from spying eyes so they couldn't see what I was up to, I got the Proton Pack pretty much completed. I'm gonna bring the buyers in and get their reactions now, see what they think of this little design that we did together. Okay guys, we're rolling. Are you ready to see the Proton Pack? Yeah! Okay, here it comes. Ready? Ready? Look what? Yeah. And twin booster packs. That's what Lincoln wanted me to do. Twin booster tubes. Make sure it's a tip because it's a tip. Yeah. Like a big one, so. And then what? There's your cone picture. Daddy put the cone picture right here. Why a cone picture? Yeah. And look, that's Daddy's hexlatron. Yeah. Or aclatron. Daddy put it on my ghost I, want it. I did put your Ghostbuster symbol there, just like your drive. Yeah! What do you think, what? Are you going to wear this Ghostbuster pack and bust some ghosts? And then we're going to paint it yeah. as we want. Right? Look at it. It's going to be so cool when it's done. You know what the next step is? What? we got to start printing some parts. Probably going to take a week. Weird. Yeah. And we got to cut out this piece on the bottom. Look, this piece here. I'll show you. Okay. This piece. This piece here is going to be cut out of wood, and all these pieces here are all going to be 3D printed. I used half inch plywood for this. The kids got in there and got their hands dirty, and we sanded up the motherboards. Then we went ahead and painted them black. Now that the kids had a turn, I'm going to go in and finish up the rest of this. And so begins the printing process. I got a ton of prints to run off. It's probably going to take me at least a week. As you can see, I'm almost out of filament. But I got a full roll of red hair. We're going to load this in. We're going to start with the Aquatron and then we're going to go from there. While all that was printing, I went ahead and made the Alice Pax frames using some CPVC pipe and I picked this little trick up from Lost Wax. You use a heat gun, you can really bend this thing up and do some cool stuff with it. Here I'm just bending this frame a little bit. Then use some elbows to stick it all together. These clip nicely into place. Take the one that says V for vertical and snap it in the middle. Wow. See? You want some help, Wyatt? And then look what I made. And now they go, they're gonna go on the front like this. Next, we gotta build the bottom part of the frame. Okay, you wanna screw a screw in? Is the power gone? Yep. Somebody shut off the power grid! Who? Walter Peck. Who's that? <laughs> hey, where's this Peck? Peck? I am Walter Peck, sir, and I'm prepared to make a full report. He's the guy in Ghostbusters who shut down the containment system, remember? And all the ghosts escaped. Oh yeah, and some... Somebody... And all the ghosts free. Yeah, what happened to the ghosts? They were all over the place. Yes, they went right through the roof. Next, I painted the frames while I was waiting for the rest of the parts to print. Gray primer, a little bit of yellow. Taped it off and then hit it all with a matte black. And I came up with some warning stripes on the side of my frames. A 
sponge and a little bit of silver and I weathered these things up with paint chips and scratches. Then I had to design the bottom half of the frame. And I had to be fairly accurate with this so I took it in and measured it up. Once I had a rough design in place, I went back on to Blender and I drafted the rest of this bottom part of this frame up. This is where all the straps and kidney pads and stuff were going to go fastened to. And I printed it and painted it up. And while that was going on, the rest of my parts printed. A whole ton of parts. I bet a week's worth of printing per pack. Each of these prints running about 20 something hours. And the last print was with some transparent filament so the lights could shine through it. This is all the prototyping and as you can see we got a ton of parts here. <laughs> and this is just the first proton pack and I got a lot more of these to make so there's a lot of 3D printing left to do but the next thing I'm going to do is take all these parts, start to put them together, make sure it fits, make any modifications to any of these STL files to make sure that the next lot that I print off are perfect. And then we're going to start printing, it's probably going to take me at least maybe two weeks to print off everything. but. I got the frames done, I got the packs done, kids are having a blast, this has been a super fun project so far and I can't wait to run into full production here now. Now most of these parts fit pretty good right off the hop. I do have a bit of an extra face right here in this one and I don't fit in my bracket very good so I'm just going to have to cut this one off of here but design a new one to eliminate that to make it fit in there. My ion arm lens is a little bit tight, I'm going to shrink this down a little bit just to make sure that one fits in there a little better. And also my V clip is a little bit tight. So I'm gonna to wanna to shrink this one down so it can fit in there a little bit better. Besides for that, most of these parts are pretty good. Can't wait to start putting some wire looms in there, some doodads, some hoses, some resistors, some stickers. I'm gonna do one up so I can figure out exactly what I need to do. Maybe modify some of the designs, add a few more holes and stuff. Hopefully things are big enough to fit the electronics and the lights. And then once I get all these prototypes to a final design, I'm going to start printing off like mad. And we're going to run off a whole bunch of parts and I'm going to go into full assembly mode. I got two fresh rolls of Duramic 3D filament. I printed a Slimer with this one. I'll link the video up here and I'll drop it in the description below where I tested it this filament. But now I'm really going to put this through the ringers because I'm just going to go full on printing for the next two days with this two rolls. So let's load it in and get going. If you guys are enjoying this video, make sure to smash that subscribe button and join the facility. I'd love to have you here. This is a half inch CPVC water pipe. It's a little bigger than the other pipes that I use. I'm going to cut this off at 13 and a half inches and use it for the neutrino line. I think I got enough here to do like four or five of these, so it should be good. With the shaft of the wand figured out, I jumped back in Blender and started to draft. The idea here was to make the, all these wand parts Kind of be split down the middle so I can bolt everything together and put the electronics inside. I made sure to get the clipper valve on there. I pulled that file from Thingiverse that isn't my design along with the resistor also on Thingiverse. I loosely based this design on the original, but I was super happy with how it came out. That little battery box on the side is a remix from a battery box I found on Thingiverse as well. Then I printed one up. 
Everything that I need to assemble the Neutrona one is here in front of me. Print it, primed, and paint it, and ready to go. Now, before I went ahead and designed all this stuff up, I did have one special thing in mind that was gonna bring this thing to the next level. And that was to take this little ray gun, take the electronics out of it, the speaker, the lights, the soundboard, and everything like that, and put it into this wand so that we could have lights and sound on our Ghostbuster pack. Now, before I did that, I did take one of these apart, measure some stuff up, and make some special design elements in the case here to fit all these electronics. And now, I'm hoping that I got it all in front of me, I can put it together, and make this thing work. The orientation on the first one I printed was all wrong, so I flipped it over, reprinted it, but it had a ton of supports, but it was no big deal, they pulled it super easy. Now, when you're taking apart this gun, you gotta be really careful because the electronics are really small and you don't want to be busted any wires from the motherboard. I even use the battery connections. The nice thing about this battery box is that it fits these little positive and negative terminals. And it takes two AA batteries. Fed it into the side of the gun and went right onto the pre-drilled bolt holes. This little top part, that's my design. It all holds together with a couple of screws on the left and right. Next, I test fitted the gun. Mixed up some JB Weld. And fixed it in place and let it dry up for a few hours. Then I soldered together some switches. Fed them into the pre-drilled holes. This is the Activate and Intensify switches. I picked those up on Amazon. Next, I had to extend these LEDs. I drilled a hole in the shaft. Wrapped its little clip so that the lights wouldn't pull through and glued that inside the tube here. Fed the LED extension wires through and wired it back into the soundboard. And I put some hot glue on the speaker and fit it right into the little circle that I drafted inside this case. Fit like a glove. Next I added some hot glue to the soundboard and place the LED indicator light through the hole that I pre-drafted as well. Finish wind it all together and then all these extra pieces pretty much acts as braces and pull this thing together. The heat sink, the clip on front, the ladder on the bottom, and the clipper belt all act to hold this case together. few extra details like the resistor, some weathering, grips, and then the transparent FDM tip, little aiming ring, and then some wires. A lens for the indicator light, also transparent FDM, and of course the stickers. And I made sure to coat these in Mod Podge to protect them and keep them stuck. Do -re -e then I use these book bags, pack the straps off them.
cut some of the backs apart to make a kidney pad. Then I sewed it all together. Then I had all the straps that I needed in order to fasten the Alice Pack frames to somebody's back. Now that I got one of these packs prototyped up and I got a whole bunch of stuff printed and painted and ready to go for a couple of more packs, I'm going to swing into full production. Now before I bring the boys in to help me out, the first thing I'm going to do is put some of these packs together and install electronics on it. Some of this is kind of difficult to put together and really time consuming so I'm going to get the hard stuff done first and then I'm going to bring the boys back and we're going to try to finish a couple of these off. I'm excited about it, let's get at it. Then it was time to paint this thing up. I picked up this trick from Punish Props Academy where they use some truck bed liner to give a rough textured finish. Then I chipped it up again using a sponge. Some of the components I detailed painted with my airbrush. Guys, if you're enjoying this video, make sure to smash that like button. It really means a lot to little channels like us and helps this video get out there to more viewers and I really appreciate it. That's the little cone catcher that White designed. This is the power pack. The bumper and the no ghost logo that Lincoln wanted on the pack. Then I fitted the frames into the Alice pack bottom. Pre-drilled the holes and screwed it all together. Added the upper clips. Now for the cyclotron, I decided to put some aluminum tape down to make a reflective surface for the lights that I plan to install. This is the ghost grate that was Lincoln's design. I had to put this on first because it was hard to get at that last screw and I also had to get this clipper valve in there. Next, I put the ion arm. Then this little ock box that houses the electronics and lights. Considering tis the season, I got these tiny little LED lights that run off a couple of AA batteries. I'm gonna take them apart and they go in the cyclotron here. And I've got to take some extra wire, string it through here and run it up in the ion arm. And I know that uh, usually this is a blue light up here, but I'm gonna go with green on my packs. A little bit of hot glue, some switches, put it in this hot box here, and hopefully we can get some lights. I had some colorful quarter inch tubes lying around, so I'll use those as wire looms. Next, I fed some wires into the hot box and the ion arm. Then these little LED Christmas lights got hacked apart and placed in the ion arm and the cyclotron. Wired the switches in. And gave it a little test. Everything was working great. change the batteries, all you have to do is take off the cyclotron lens. 
Next I had these little color changing tea lights. These things are really cool and I've used them on a few projects. But I took them apart, drilled some holes in the housing. Drilled some holes in the top part. Wired in a switch. Wired the two lights together and then place it in the bottom of the housing and just use a bit of pressure to keep it connected to the positive terminal of the battery. Glued it in place so the wires wouldn't move anywhere. This is a little clip that I printed to make sure the batteries are pushed down tight into the housing because I removed the springs. Then I glued both of these lights in place and luckily enough this little housing fit down this arc box so I glued that right down in place too. And just like that, these things fit perfectly. Kind of worked out for the best. This is a little resistor I got from Thingiverse. JB welded that to the side. Then I used some rope and some 3 8 wire loom to make the connections from the neutron wand to the proton pack. Time to put together some proton packs. It's time to put together the proton packs. Hey Wyatt, first thing we need to do is put some glue on this bulb. We need to put this. Yep. We need to put this right in the middle like that. And push it down. <laughs> Gently. Okay, just make sure you don't uh, the water stuck. Oh, it's dead. This hair goes right there. Look. You want to put this piece on? I do not think I even know that. Okay, what? This piece here, this is the cone catcher. The cone catcher. This one goes right here. So after the kids went to bed, I went to work and finished assembly on these packs. Right here, this is the power supply. Added another resistor. Wired it all together. These are some wooden dowels painted copper. And place them on top of the ion arm. This is the V clip which the wand fastens to. Attach the neutron wand by pushing it through the hole and adding the screw to make sure it wouldn't pull through. Lens, bumper, then it was time to make the ribbon cable. I also picked this little trick up from Lost Wax. He has a great proton build video. Cat 5 wire straightened and encased in some Gorilla Tape. Glued them inside the ghost grate. Gonna use a heat gun to help me warp and spin this cable around. And attach it to the cyclotron with some hot glue. And this little clip that I drafted. Then I used the sponge and weathered up the motherboard. Cut out these stickers that I printed on a label maker. 
applied them and put them down with some more Mod Podge. Screwed the frame to the motherboard. Added some reflective tape. Strapped on the kidney pad. Tied on the lower part of the shoulder straps. Screwed on the upper part of the shoulder straps. Place a little piece of foam protection up around the neck area and zip tied it in place. Then I added this little flashlight that would shine over the shoulder for a little bit of fun. Oh, oh, I always hated this part of the business. I absolutely love how this thing came out. I can't be more proud of the boys for their help and their inspiration on this whole project. This really wouldn't have been half as cool without them. Really like these booster tubes. Lincoln done a great job designing these with the color changing lights in there. They just add this really cool feature to the pack. frames and the straps came out awesome. Even the extra sticker details which I picked up from Ghostbusters fans website turned out awesome. The Neutrona one is amazing. I can't believe it all fit together so well. The lights and sounds are super cool. You're going to want to wait for it. It's coming up soon. Overall, absolutely love this project. My favorite one to date. Good idea, but we can do more damage that way. <laughs> 